Well howdy folks and welcome back to the Luminary Shop. In this video I'm going to use this very basic and small example of an English wheel to form some parts for a pair of hearse lamps that I am restoring. Now I'm trying to make doors for these lamps and there's a couple of unique problems that go into making these doors. First of all the outer skin is curved and the inner liner is also curved but I want a space between the two and they have to fit flat on the surface all the way around a rectangle. Now that's easy to accomplish with a circle but with a rectangle it brings in some other uh, forces and that's why we have to use an English wheel. Now English wheels have been around since the early 1800s. One of the early sheet metal working tools that were available. They're quite simple in operation and they employ an upper wheel with a flat surface called the rolling wheel and several lower wheels called anvils. Now these anvils have a different radius on the surface depending on how deep and what shape you want to make on the wheel. So I typically use this one which doesn't show a lot of curve here but there's enough to make just about anything that I want to make. So this anvil sits down in that saddle and this screw then adjusts the pressure to which the anvil presses on the rolling wheel. The material is passed between the wheels. It's squashed down and spread out kind of similar to making a pizza crust out of a ball of dough. As, as you roll across it, it makes it larger and larger and in this case that steel has to have a place to, to go and so it forms a dome over the curve of this lower anvil wheel. And you can see that as we work it it starts to get a curve that's forming over the crown in that anvil. Now the parts that I'm going to make have a few unique uh, properties about them that I'm going to have to deal with. Namely, they're rectangular and the outer edge all the way around has to fit flat on the surface of the lamp. And so the curve that I make is going to have to be such that it will be different in the corners than it will in the middle. So I'm going to build or leave, I'm going to leave uh, an edge all the way around that I'm going to attempt to avoid with the wheel so that it does not stretch and that portion of the material remains flat while the portion that I do wheel comes up into a nice curved surface. I'm going to use 0.032 thick soft brass to make the liners. The closer that I make each pass as I work my way across this material, the smoother the curve will be. Larger, more elaborate and expensive wheels can be fitted with a hard rubber tire around that rolling wheel that makes a smoother yet curve. You can see the dome already forming in this piece of brass.
that edge that I left has not stretched, but it has wrinkled. So I'm using the brake to flatten it back out. Now that I have the concave shape that I want, I'll remove the excess material on the edge. I'm notching the corners so that I can turn this into a shallow convex pan. The concave side of this part will be the finished side. You can see the marks made by the wheel in this soft material. The polisher will deal with those marks when they polish up this piece for silver plating. I'll make the outer skin of these doors from 24 gauge cold rolled steel.
Yep, I speeded up some of the clips in this video just to move it along. This piece is coming along nicely, but it's not quite deep enough yet. This looks more like the depth that I want for these outer doors.
These are the bodies that I started with, and this is where I ended up. I'll get all of the parts sent to the platers for polishing and silver plating. When I get them back, I'll be able to put these lamps together and finish them up. Until then, as always, thanks for watching.